goes together. The Bible says, Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son of uh, can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things uh, soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Are we in the place in our life where we want God to show us greater works than what we've seen or even what we've read that we may marvel at God? I believe God wants to be marveled at. I just believe that's who God is. He wants to be worshipped. He wants us to marvel at Him because He is God. Amen. Think about this. God is... God is I, I, I've been thrown. I want you to think about something tonight. I believe that we need to pray our Father which art in heaven. I see God in a masculine sense. Sorry, I don't pray Mother God. I don't. However, I'll get on board and say this. I also know that God has a nurturing ability like a mother has. Amen. Even though He's God. So the realm of God is greater than anything my mind can wrap around. And I'm just going to be okay with understanding. I'm never going to fully comprehend who God is because He's vast and He's awesome. Amen. That's just who He is. And so when we look at who God is, He wants us to marvel at Him. I want you to think about this. So many amazing things have happened in the world that we live in. Think of just, it's a little over a century ago that the Wright brothers developed a play, a play and they defied, they defied uh, what is known as the law of gravity because they wanted to just break a barrier. They wanted to do something that, 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 that would beyond, be beyond the norm and folks would marvel at, and certainly they did. However, uh, after the Wright brothers uh, created their plane, uh, there was a man, let me see where I wrote his name down, Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager in the 1940s decided he was going to take it a step farther. So now we have 45, almost 45 years in which the plane has been uh, 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 developed by the Wright brothers. 45 years later, here Chuck Yeager does something. Does anyone know what he did? He broke the sound barrier in a play. And so uh, we think about that. Now here we are, some over 50 years later, and if we even go back 20 years, we can find, and let me see where I'm at in my notes, that innovation of technology has changed so much that literally planes can almost fly themselves because of all the technology that's in there. We have gone to double-decker planes because that's what technology has allowed us. You can sit on a plane and you can watch TV. I mean, it's just amazing all the technology that has been done, even in the past 20 years when it comes to play. Folks are always breaking just the statistics of what was, and we marvel. Tonight it's pretty interesting. Thank you for being here on Super Bowl evening because there will be a man who will be playing. His name is Tom Brady. And Tom Brady himself, he has, in, in, I think it was 2007, he broke all the records uh, of being the greatest quarterback. Uh, he, he broke the statistics of that. It was even uh, Donald Trump, he said this, he said, Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all times. He's 41 years old and still playing in the NFL. He, he, he had, at one time said he wanted to be 45. The oldest age is 48. So we'll see. But that's pretty amazing, even where he's at right now. He likes folks to see that things can be broken and to bring them up. Pretty interesting, huh? So we look at folks like Orville and Wilbur Wright. We looked at Chuck Yeager. They've gone off the scenes. Tom Brady will go off the scenes. He won't be here another decade. Probably not. At least in the position that he's in. Probably. But there's one who, even though he's off the scenes, is still causing folks to stand in a marvel and a wonder. And his name is Jesus Christ. Greater works than these he would do that we may marvel. Hey man, do you believe that God is able to work in your life? No matter how old you are, 
No matter how long you've been in your particular uh, position where you are, amen, when we look at the possibilities through the power and the provision of God, amen, it will expand our dreams, it will expand our vision, amen, for us to know that there's no limits, amen, that we can break anything because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Amen. Can we do that as individuals? Can we do that as a church? Amen. Can we do greater things than ever before? Knowing that through Christ. Amen. Through Christ in me. Amen. My identity is in Christ. Once again, what I said last week, it's a constant evaluating ourselves against Christ. Affirmation that I need to make modification or I need to abort where I'm at and line myself up with Christ. I can do all things through Christ what strengthens me. What are the things you want to do? What are the things you want to see in life? Carrying around grudges, carrying around insecurities, carrying around a uh, feeling that you need to promote yourself, uh, that God can't do it. Amen. It's God who lifts up at a basis. And wherever God places us, is where he wants us to be. Amen. Knowing that wherever we're at, we can show the wonder of who Christ is. We can show the wonder of who Christ is. Jesus Christ definitely knew what it was like to break records, to break the norms, to tear through barriers. We think about the Seraphonician woman in Matthew chapter number 15. I'm going to just, if I could, just give you references tonight. Amen. There's no turning to all these. But the Seraphonician was uh, uh, pleading for her, her daughter who was in a pitiful condition. And it almost seems like if you read the scripture that Jesus ignored her. But we find that Jesus, he was on a mission only to the lost sheep, uh, sheep of the house of Israel. And, and, and then he, 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 he appeals and, and he says this, for it is not meat or it's not the right thing to do is what he's saying. To give the children's bread to dogs, or mongrel dogs. That's what the Sarfanish woman was. <laughs> Just kind of that mixed breed. And then he left the door to her. Will you break through? Or will you be satisfied, sir, Phoenician woman? And so all of a sudden, she steps by faith and says, wait a second. I'm breaking this barrier. And I'm going to become more in Christ. And I'm going to see what Christ can do for me. Amen. She says, wait a second. But even... The dogs, even the house pets. You want to call me a mongrel? <laughs> uh, even, even the house pets in, their, in, in Israel, they get the crumbs that fall from the table. Uh, they, they have it. And so here it is that, 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 that she sees Christ move into her because she has a determination. I'm not going to stay where I'm at statistically. I'm not going to stay where I'm at. I want to move on to something bigger and better. And I have a made up mind. Do we have a made up mind as believers? I'm not staying here, but I'm going to tear down mountains. Amen. I'm going to cross red seas. Amen. I'm going to see bodies healed. I'm going to see people who are oppressed and possessed. I'm going to see them delivered. Amen. Through the blood and power of Jesus Christ. I'm breaking the barriers. <laughs> it was the blind man in Mark chapter number 10. The Bible says that and there came to, uh, and as, as they came to Jericho, and he went out of the house of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, uh, that blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the way, uh, highway side begging. And when he had heard that Jesus was coming by, you know, his hearing becomes more acutely active because he can't see. So one sense becomes stronger because one sense doesn't work. 
However, even in this, uh, uh, this, this acute ability that he has in hearing, there's so much going on that it's just, it's confusing to him. And so he just begins to yell out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And, and, and Scarlet, he's yelling out in every direction because he doesn't know where Jesus is. He just knows that he's coming by. People tell him, be quiet, be quiet. What does he do? All the more, he yells out. I am not staying where I'm at. Right. Not when Jesus is passing by. Not when I have the opportunity to see the Lord work and move in my life. I won't be marveled by God. And so he makes up his mind. And so here it is that God touches him. You know the woman with the issue of blood. Everything's stacked against her. Everything. She's tired. She's weary. She's unclean. But yet she reaches out by faith. Amen. And she says, I don't care what the barrier is. I don't care how deep the crowd is. I am pressing through. Because I'm going to do and be something more than what my current condition has been for the past 12 years. I'm not going to be this. This is not going to be my label. And so by faith, her labels changed because Christ passes by. And because of her faith. <clears throat> it was the widow at Nain. Her son had died. The Bible says, that Jesus had compassion on her and said, we not. He touched that casket. And that young boy came back to life. Talk about all hope being lost. All hope being lost. Your husband, your child. It's okay. All of our minds think, what would I do? Because that's the natural thing that we do. Or all of a sudden we project, oh, you should have faith in God. It'll be okay. It's just the way it is. Get over it. Okay. But that's not the reality of it. Jesus saw the hopes he lost. And he passed by. So when you feel like all hope was lost, Jesus passes by. You know, I read something this week that was interesting to me. I should always back things up by reading a little more. But I'm just going to throw it out there anyway. You can do your research. So the woman at the well, was she divorced? Did all five husbands die? But anyway, who she was with was not her husband. <coughs> and her friend of mine probably, either if it was that she was widowed and they died, or through divorce, whatever <coughs> it is. Whatever it is. Her mind is thinking, I'm an outcast, so I know where they are coming. But you know what Jesus did? You know what Jesus did? He met her at the well. You can go on, disciples, but there's a meat here for me to meet. He met her right where she was. Hmm. That is like a fish hook in my heart. Do I meet people where they are? Do I? Or do I come with bias and judgment? I'm just saying. I want us in this church to climb up the mountain. That little bump I talked about this morning. Climb up and meet people where they are. <clears throat> He's the Savior. You don't gotta do it. Christ is working. There's only one Savior. Allow him to be savior of the situation. Allow yourself, as I said last week, to be identified with Christ. 
Yes, I look and see there's Sister Susan. All our features show me it's her. There's Sister Stacy. But the real identity of that is really to be below and say, I see God in Sister Susan. I see God in Sister Stacy. I do, I do, ladies. I see God in Christ. And then because of our identity in Christ, meet people the way that Christ met people. I know you're thirsty. Here's some water. You didn't shove your head down, you didn't throw it down below. But he gave an opportunity. Let's approach with opportunity for folks to be able to drink at the well. We also have to understand none of us in here are perfect. Not that any of you think that, because I don't think that, or at least I'm not into that. You know, maybe sometimes Brother Snow doesn't call. It's not that I'm not concerned. It's not that I don't pray for you. It's not that I don't wish you. It could just be sometimes I'm a little backward on that, to be honest. I don't want to cry it to you. <coughs> but I want to know I'm a mission. So don't judge in that way, or I don't want to judge in a way for you. But just allow Christ to be Christ and meet people where they are. That's just where I'm at tonight. <coughs> I think that we can shop the house down, and I think we should. I like to see more shopping. I like to see more people getting demonstrative and more worship. I'm okay with that. That don't scare me. But I think the work of the Spirit also works in how we in our life speak and reach out to others. Let's pray. Let's defy. I can love the unlovable. I can see Christ move in him because I'm marvel. Because it's not me who's doing anything for you. It's the wonder of the God I serve. And every time he walks in my life, I'm done. I'm done tonight. I just want you to gather in. I won't sit there, I don't want music tonight. I just want us to gather in very soberly and just ask the Lord to help us not to miss the opportunity. What would have happened if some woman had ever spoken to Nick Hart's life? I don't think he'd be my teacher. I don't want to go. But because someone did what about that pastor of that church? I believe that he would have been left with the girl of mom leaving and section up eight housing. And I think he would have taken him down for a spiral. But someone spoke to him in the And it changed. We have the power through Christ. You may say, oh, I'm shy. Hmm. Interesting. When the Holy Ghost gets on you, will be. It will still be in your, your personality. But God will use you to speak into the lives of others, to grow the kingdom of God. Let's go to tonight and find a place for